So does carb cycling help you with your health recovery and weight loss, or does it hinder your health recovery and weight loss? Let's find out in today's video. Hi there, it's Paul Tarpe, nutritionist and lifestyle coach at Rawsome Healthy. And before we get going with today's video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and make sure to press that bell notification so you always stay up to date with our latest videos. Okay, so on to today's video, which is all about carb cycling, which is something you can do on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And no, it's nothing to do with riding a bicycle. So sorry if I'm gonna disappoint you, but it's nothing to do with riding a bicycle. So for example, if you did it on a daily basis, carb cycling, which is what's called carb cycling, you could do it like this. You could have a day where you did a high carbohydrate intake, which is 50% or more of your total daily calories coming from carbs. You could do a lower uh, carb, a carb day intake, which is around say 20% or more of total daily calories coming from carbohydrates. Or you can do a no carb day, which would be typically 10% or less of your daily calorie intake coming from carbohydrates. And not every carb cycling routine would include a no carb day. This can differ, so some would just include a high carb and a lower carb day. So I've got a question for you. Perhaps you've done carb cycling in the past, or you're doing carb cycling now. And what sort of results, if any, have you seen? I'd love to know, and please leave your comments in the comments section below. So the reason behind this way of eating is a lot to do with eating more carbohydrates when you're more physically active and eating less carbohydrates when you're less physically active. And a lot of this has to do with supposedly with uh, maintaining your weight or losing excess uh, weight. So losing excess fat weight, for example. Now, if this all sounds a bit complicated and fiddly, you know, changing your dip meal every day to include different amounts of carbohydrates or very little or low carbohydrates, then it's because it is, it is difficult to do. It is complicated or fiddly, it takes a lot of planning. And you know, is, is it really going to be sustainable for a lot of people? And you know, to be honest, I really don't think it is going to be a sustainable diet for a lot of people to follow. Now, if this is not a good enough reason in itself to not be doing carb cycling and following this complicated and fiddly way of eating, and you know, something which is just not sustainable for going to be sustainable for a lot of people, then actually there are many other reasons for not doing this kind of eating as well. And some of these actually include. People often focus on weight loss rather than their overall health. And just focusing on weight loss is not a healthy approach to have when it comes to your overall health. In fact, doing this kind of diet won't make you lose fat weight any faster than any other diets, including high carb. And this has actually been shown in studies. Another one is cutting back on carbohydrates can actually cause food cravings, which means you can end up binging on food and gaining all the weight back that you've lost not something that you want to do for your health. Another one is that many people mistakenly believe that increased insulin levels from eating carbs leads to automatic weight gain, as in fat storage. But this is actually incorrect. Yes, eating highly refined carbs like cakes and donuts are not health promoting for sure, but these are a world away from eating foods like whole fruits, for example, that are full of vitamins, minerals and fiber that are great for your hormonal balance and your gut health. Other significant health issues include things like decreased thyroid output, which has been shown in studies, so a slower metabolism, lower testosterone levels, lower immune system function, higher cortisol levels, higher LDL, or also known as the bad cholesterol levels in your body, which can increase your risk of things like heart attacks and strokes. And another one is impaired mood and brain function. Now I can personally vouch for seeing a lot of these same health issues and a lot of clients that we work with who come to us typically from eating a high fat diet, which is by definition low in carbohydrates. They've got high LDL levels, so high bad cholesterol levels, which obviously is an increased risk factor for heart disease and for things like heart attacks and strokes. We're talking, they have, um, talking about low mood they've got as well. They've got low energy levels. They've got skin problems. They've got gut problems. They've got hormonal imbalances, they've got problems with food cravings, sugar cravings because they're eating so many, so little carbs and so much fat, and they've got inflammation in their body as well. So they've got a lot of health issues that they, they've had, and a lot of these have come from eating a high fat diet. So knowing all this, what is the very best approach to optimizing your health, balancing your hormones, 
balancing your gut health and balancing your excess weight so you can eat all the food that you care for without having to follow some strict or difficult to follow and unsustainable menu plan that's only going to damage your health. Well, make sure to visit our online masterclass at www.rawsomehealthy.com forward slash webinar where you can follow the five steps to balancing your hormones, balancing your gut health and losing your excess weight naturally so you can create the body and lifestyle of your dreams. Thank you very much for watching this video and we'll see you again. Bye for now.